Oh, hello there. I hope you're all right. Um, it's okay this end. And I'm reading this book, and it's a very important book. I've only had it for two years. I should have had it long ago. Um, <clears throat> but it's really great. And what is it? Yes, it dates from 1959, and as far as I know, it's the largest and most ambitious attempt of that period on the history of sound recording and reproduction. It has over 500 closely printed pages. It is also copiously illustrated. Uh, the authors Oliver Reed and Walter L. Welsh were staunch Edison men. Reed was involved in the Edison Laboratory National Monument, as it was then known, and Welch had an Edison-related post, um, amongst others, uh, at the uh, Syracuse University, New York. But the real reason for this video, which should be fun, can be found in the patent specification of Edison's tinfoil phonograph of 1877. By the way, this patent number 1644 of 1878 was issued in the UK. Um, Edison had obviously sent the spec to Washington DC, to London and probably Paris and Berlin, I don't know, uh, but it went through the London Patent Office first. And even at this early time, the US and UK had reciprocal recognition of each other's patents. Now, patent specs make pretty tedious reading, and this one's very long and very comprehensive, so I'd pretty well skipped it. That is, until we came to the illustrations, which are all at the end of the 17-page long document. Uh, yes, the first illustration is interesting. It's uh, it's actually a disc uh, tinfoil phonograph, which is uh, <laughs> really very interesting. Uh, but we don't really get to the nitty-gritty until we come to the last page of the illustrations. Great Scott, what's this? It's, it's a solenoid, uh, an electromagnet in fact. A coil of wire with a core, probably of uh, soft iron, and uh, then it's got a, a, a stylus bar anchored at the bottom, uh, and then the stylus bar extends upwards in between the solenoid, and there is a point uh, which engages upon uh, a cylinder. Uh, well, what we've actually got, in short, is a setup for electrical recording in 1877, which isn't bad, is it? Well, that's pretty sensational. Um, electrical recording in 1877. So we're going back to reread. We reread re the whole patent. I'm sure hundreds of people have read it, but nobody. I never knew about electric recording. Um, and I go back and read the patent, and it also says we can record. Uh, magnetically on a strip of metal. So, uh, you know, he's got magnetic tape recording in there as well. Um, of course, the, ironically, the thing he doesn't have in the patent is to engrave on a cylinder. He's only embossing on a cylinder, which uh, enabled uh, Bell and Tainter to patent the graphophone. So I don't suppose Edison was very pleased about that. But anyway, if we're going to record, if Edison could record in 1877 or show us how to do so, then it's a must. We have got to do it. And um, so off we went and we started messing around. And the first thing we needed was some wax cylinders. Fortunately, we already had some brown wax cylinders, which we'd bought uh, really very cheaply three or four years ago and uh, they were all very mouldy and we didn't really do much with them. Uh, we didn't shave them so the mould on the surface when we tried to melt them down and cast them into discs, which is what we wanted them for, it just made a terrible mess. So they, we stuck them in the garden shed, but now they came into their own. Uh, but we did need to skim them. As you can see, it's a very messy business. We can now push in the... Um Pushing the tool till it just begins to make the tiniest turning. 
particularly shallow. Here we go. Yes, this is it. We can we can now switch on the automatic feed, and then we'll have a look at it. That skimming as it goes along, we'll do a close up. There's actually a crack here in this cylinder about an inch and a half long, giving it ticking, uh, but the rest of the cylinder is fine. Uh, we took uh, a scrap drill, 8.5 millimetres, and in order to have a rounded uh, edge, a sharp edge to machine the cylinders, we did a uh, ground a flat on it, which gave this sloping area, uh, and it's fine, uh, and because it's high speed steel it will last forever. We're reading this from a script. We already had an electric cylinder player made some years ago, and this has been the subject of a YouTube uh, video, to which there is a link below, but we needed a recording machine. Happily though, also some time ago, we had bought quite cheaply the top works of a two minute Edison home phonograph. No box, no motor, literally just the top plate, and even then missing the all important half nut. Uh, and also no gate clamp, which wasn't a problem. We tried to think up a recording head that would fit into the original carriage, you know, the, the, the traversing set. We made this adapter, um, but we discovered um, that there wasn't really enough space to work with, and as we found out later, the recorder must be able to float the same as a reproducer. This is a view of the, uh, the Mark I version. The final version you'll see is, is very, very similar and uh, we've just got a box made out of cheap chipboard um, and then let's take a closer look. We codged up uh, a carriage out of a couple of bits of aluminium, a couple of uh, little blocks uh, and a strip of brass and the, um, we used a, an old X-Acto blade uh, going into the uh, feed screw uh, which needed a five gram weight on the end of this extension piece then that transfers the whole assembly along the, the cylinder and it works quite well. The coil um, has a soft iron core going down and um, it's got a few hundred turns of 25 SWG enamelled copper wire uh, which is very, that's the British size. It's, I think the US and British wire gauges are quite similar when you get, especially when you get to thin ones, fairly thin ones. The DC resistance of it is five and a half ohms, so our amplifier thinks it's driving a loudspeaker. <laughs> Little does it realise it's connected to a fiendish contrivance worthy of Heath Robinson, which I think is Rube uh, Goldberg in the USA. Okay, and um, now these neodymium magnets are on top of this, which is the soft iron core, which goes through uh, to the business end underneath, which we'll look at next. This is the underside of the, the head, and uh, we have two metal strips, which are actually uh, transformer laminations. They're rather thick. We should have used something thinner, but they were to hand, and um, it does work to some extent, as you'll soon hear. This one bears a small sapphire point, the relic of a 78 replay, it's meant for a replay, just the tip of it, um, and that is directly over the uh, soft iron core. These are the neodymium, neodymium magnets. Uh, and then next to it is the, uh, the very important thing, uh, another strip with a piece of agate on it, like a section of a ring actually, a sort of shoe, and that, that the height of that can be adjusted by this screw here which comes through and can either raise or lower it. Um, now that is very important because um, when we did it without this it was too heavy and too cumbersome. If you put a weight on the back it just sort of produced the momentum of the whole system was too high. Um, now there is a, a Sean Borry, a guy, a very expert guy in the States, has shown on one of his videos a, uh, an Edison cutting head that actually has got a way of controlling the depth of cut 
by using an outrigger of agate or something similar. And um, that made it, it made it very good. And indeed, you can see from this cylinder which we use that um, the cut is quite light. When we when we didn't have that, it would dig in, and it was it was pretty hopeless. So this is an essential part of uh, a cylinder uh, recorder of that sort. Uh, right, uh, time to wrap it up before the video gets too long. Uh, yeah, we powered the recorder with a favourite combination of a no, we know Nano in this case a micro step driver and a NEMA 17 stepper motor which we've used many times we used uh, timing belts and pulleys which are all very good we'll finish by playing you three recordings which we made and each one will have a caption and so uh, you'll see what it says and also how it was made so thanks for watching this and um, all the best to you take care bye This is a test which has been recorded on a two minute brown wax cylinder. Eventually we hope to make a recording as illustrated in the Edison patent of 1878 in which an electromagnet is used to actuate a stylus bar resting on a blank cylinder. Thus Edison envisaged electrical recording from the very start of his cylinder work. However, this recording has been made using a piezoelectric transducer, which is cheating. But now we know it is quite feasible to record electrically, we will now attempt to use the method in the Edison patent. We have at last completed our attempt to record sound electrically on a two minute brown wax cylinder. Although the quality is not as good as our first attempt, it is more faithful to Edison's 1878 patent. This is because the recording device was an electromagnet actuating a strip of metal anchored at one end with a recording point at the other. This is as illustrated in the British patent number 1644, dated 24th of April 1878. This was granted prior to any US patent. We have no plans to continue the project with basic objects having been attained. Norman Fields, on the 14th of June 2022. Hello, this is a test recording um, on Friday the 1st of Ju July and we have a little agate shoot um, which hopefully will give us a constant depth of cut uh, which is adjustable. Okay, this is the first try.